of failures around me But I know there is a place for me in God My wealthy place Help me sing Good morning, church. How are you today? We give God all the glory for the just concluded PLC. I believe that the Lord Almighty has blessed you and know that God Almighty has done something great in our lives in the name of Jesus. So we want to ask you that the, the testimonies, please send them in to the email on your screen. We'd love to know what God has done and what God is still doing in your lives. And I know that God will continue to do great things in the mighty name of jesus we bless the name of the lord hallelujah so are you ready for today's service it's going to be powerful it's going to be glorious in the name of jesus before we go into the service shall we just pray our father and our god we glorify your holy name we want to thank you lord for another day for the miracle of sleeping and waking up we bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Father, Lord, for that which you keep doing in our midst, in our lives, in our church, and in our nation. Lord, we just appreciate you in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, this is the day that you have made, a day of joy and a day of gladness. And so, Father, we just come into this service into your hands, O oh God. We ask, Father, let the heavens be open. The Bible says that, oh, that you will rent open the heavens that you would come down. Father, Lord, come down into our midst in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, bless us this day in the name of Jesus. And Lord Almighty, we just pray even concerning our nation, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the work of cleansing that you're doing in, in this nation. Father, continue to bless the nation. The Bible says that affliction shall not arise again, O God. We ask, O God, that concerning our nation, Lord, affliction shall not rise again there shall be no second spike in the name of jesus we say no to this virus in the name of jesus lord we bless and we worship you thank you faithful father in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen praise the lord so are you ready for the service we're going to dance we're going to worship the lord so let's welcome the choir amen god bless you thank you god we worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. We worship you. We worship you. You are here, working in. We worship you, we worship you, hey, promise keep on light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, sing away. We worship you, we worship you, you are here, turning every story into glory, we worship 
Jesus. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all our honor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Put your hands together now. How we go? Yes. Bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Now bless the Lord with me. Oh, bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. And the brothers sing with me. Bless, bless the Lord. He is worthy, worthy. Bless. Yo 
your hands with me. Come on now, let's go. Woo. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Oh, clap your hands with me. Everybody join me, see. Clap, 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 clap. If you really love Jesus, clap. Clap, 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 clap. Clap for Jesus. Clap, clap, Jesus. Clap for the Messiah. For He's so good to us.
service so far. We're taking a hymn to the Lord. Count your blessings. Hallelujah. When upon my pillows you are tempest told, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings and name them one by one. And it will celebrate your family members and all your loved ones all over the world and I want to thank you thank you once again for being part of that glorious you know prayer revival conference our first virtual PRC ever it was indeed glorious and wonderful and God used you to make you to make that conference a great success we celebrate and we thank and appreciate all our guest ministers who preach and minister to us powerfully from uh, across the globe. We want to thank all brethren who connected from all over the world. And I am confident to say that indeed the siege is over and testimonies are already coming in and you are next in line to testify 
in the name of Jesus Christ. The blessings of the Lord are unlimited. So you will continue to enjoy the blessings of increase, of multiplication, and of great increase in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to this Sunday service. And I want to thank all uh, our wonderful uh, brothers and sisters who have ministered before me this morning. And I'm sure that you have been blessed by uh, the prayers, testimonies, and the praise and worship session from Voice of Victory. I pray that the Voice of Victory will never, never leave your household in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a new day and get ready because God will make all things brand new in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, amen. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, amen. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallo be thy name, Hallo be thy name. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name, we bless your name, we magnify your name, we adore you. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your goodness, and your mercy. We thank you for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and will be glad in him. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for all that you are doing for us. Thank you for greater things that you have promised to do. Thank you, o God, for salvation of our souls. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for protection. Thank you for preservation. Thank you, Lord, for bringing an end to the siege. Because the Lord called those things that be not as though they were. We are grateful that you are the Lord who hears and answers prayers. And unto you will all flesh come. Thank you for the just concluded prayer revival conference. Thank you for all that you did at our first ever virtual all week conference. We are so grateful. We believe, oh God, that we have received answers to our prayers. And we thank you because we are already testifying. And our testimonies will never cease. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise and glory. We bless and magnify you. We worship you, King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you for giving us rest on every side. For we know, O oh God, that there will be no more adversaries nor evil occurrence. Thank you, my Father, my God. As you gave rest to the realm of Jehoshaphat, we are grateful to you that you are giving rest and peace to the realm of the United Kingdom. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We glorify you. Have your way in our lives. Do what you only you can do at this service. Meet your people at the point of their needs. Answer all our prayers. And let all glory and praises be yours and yours alone. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 21. Daniel chapter 2 verse 21. The Bible says, And it changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He changes the times and the seasons. He changes the times and the seasons. I want you to pray this prayer loud and clear. Say, O oh God, that changes times and seasons, arise and be my God. O oh God, that changes times and seasons, arise be our God in our nation. 
be our God in our families. We will serve the Lord our God who changes times and seasons. O oh God, who changes times and seasons, arise this day, be my God, be our God, be the God of our land. Change times and seasons to favor us again. Give us times of revival again in our nation. In the name of Jesus, give us times of refreshing again in our nation. In the name of Jesus, give us times of restoration again in our nation. In the name of Jesus, give us times of healing again in our nations. Give us times of recovery again in our nation. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, who changes times and seasons, arise and be my God. Thank you, precious Lord. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed amen praise the name of the lord hallelujah hallelujah our test today is taken from isaiah 41 verse 18 isaiah 41 verse 18 and i will read i will open rivers in desolate eyes and fountains in the midst of the valleys i will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Hallelujah. Thus said the Lord, it will open rivers in desolate eyes. It will cause fountains to spring forth in your valleys. The Lord will make your wilderness a pool of water. Hallelujah. The Lord will convert your dry land to springs of water. Why? Because he is the Lord that changes times and seasons. And the topic or title of this message that I bring to you from the Lord today is your dry season is changing. Prophesy to yourself three times. My dry season is changing. Number two, my dry season is changing. One more time, my dry season is changing. Hallelujah. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit. As you breathe upon your word and you confirm the preaching of your word with signs and wonders. Take all the glory, my Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything in life answers to seasons. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time to every purpose under heaven. Everything in life answers to what to seasons there is a time of planting in life and there is a time of harvesting in life genesis 8 22 genesis 8 22 after the flood god told noah and after the siege after the siege is over god is telling you and i as long as the earth remained seed time and harvest time will not cease as long as the heart remains, the siege is over, the heart still remains. Hallelujah. God says that times and seasons will keep being there and keep changing. Season of sowing and season of harvest. And seasons do not just manifest in the physical alone. Natural forces govern seasons, no doubt about, but we also talk <clears throat> or speak of spiritual seasons as you have physical natural seasons like springtime like summertime like winter rainy season and matter season and all that you also have you have the fall you also have a spiritual equivalence the spiritual equivalence of times and seasons for example a dry season in the spiritual stands for or represents unfruitfulness, unfruitfulness, barrenness, scarcity, austerity. Dry season, spiritually speaking, represents failure, hard times, hardship. Many people will say that we are living in hard times, the dry season of life worldwide at this time. Dry season can represent a life of poverty, a life of affliction, 
a season of reproach in the person's life. And the truth, no matter the season that one may be going through in life right now, no matter what the negativity of your own season may look like, the truth about life is that no season stays permanently. No season stays permanently. <laughs> Once I've been young, now I am old. I have never seen a permanent winter all around the year worldwide, the most parts of the world. I have not seen dry season all around the year, even if it's going to be for the twinkle of an eye. There will be a change in season. There will be a change in season. Praise the name of the Lord. I also live in a country where in one day you can see almost four different seasons manifesting. The rain can fall and, and there could be bright sunshine and it can just get cloudy suddenly and then you can begin to have windy storm or thunderstorm all in one day. Every season comes and goes away. No season is permanent. No wonder there is that English proverb that says no condition <clears throat> is permanent. Hallelujah. When you have rainy season, for instance, it's a mark of the end of dry season. Just as dry season spiritually stands for negative situations and circumstances of life, rainy season of, of life spiritually also stands for fruitfulness. For instance, it stands for showers of blessings. It stands for success in life, flourishing life, breakthroughs, prosperity, Rainy season stands for a turn around, a turn around. May God give us brand new season in the name of Jesus Christ. Seasons that will be called rainy season of turn around, positive turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18, there has been famine, there has been drought, there had been no rain, there was no rain for three and a half years. In Israel, and when Elijah came to Mount Carmel, he prayed to the God of heaven. He challenged those who have turned away from God and who are serving idols. And of course, the God of Elijah, you know, answered Elijah by fire. And a land where there had been no rain for three and a half years, abundant of rain, abundant of rain came. The season changed, the dry season ended, and God gave the land a brand new season of fruitful rainfall and fruitful harvest. And with rainfall, with, with rainfall comes fruitfulness, comes harvest. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that dry season in our nation, that dry season in your life, that dry season in your family is ending now. It is ending this month. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Ezekiel 34, <clears throat> 26. Ezekiel 34, 26. It says, I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing, a blessing. And I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing blessing hallelujah for your rainy season to come the heavens must open the heavens must open for you to enjoy rainy season and that is the prerogative of the god of all grace the god of all grace opens the heavens to bring rainy season to bring showers of blessings to his people in first peter 5 10 first peter 5 10 the bible says but may the god of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered for a while, after you have experienced the dry season for a while, after you have experienced the hardship for a while, after you have, you know, endured the pandemic for a while, after you have experienced the crisis, the turbulence, the afflictions, not forever, not permanently, but for a while. He says that that God of all grace, he will do what? He will perfect you, he will establish you, he will strengthen you, and he will set to you. Seven is a number of perfection. This is the seventh month of year 2020. I am praying that in the name of Jesus Christ, the time of hardship 
of suffering, of enduring, the times of battling the affliction and the crisis. That season is over in the name of Jesus Christ. The God of all grace will begin to perfect all that concerns you. Psalm 138 verse 8. Psalm 138 verse 8. David prayed. He said, Thou, O Lord, we perfect all that concerns me. I also stand in that office today and I pray. I pray for my nation. I pray for my family. I pray for you, your family members, and all your loved ones. They could see the Katayanda that this month, this month, this seventh month, God will perfect all that concerns you in the name of Jesus Christ. Dry seasons are not permanent. And concerning your own spiritual dry season today, hear the word of the Lord, it is coming to an end. And a change is bound to take place because our God is a God that changes times and seasons. And we have many biblical cases of those who went through dry season of life, but God changed their dry season. And the dry season of life could be physical, it could be material, it could be spiritual, it could be mental, it could be in business, in career, in our jobs, in our finances, it could be in our marriages. Dry seasons can manifest and raise up its, day, its head in any area of human life and human endeavor. For example, in John chapter 5, we see an example of a physical dry season. A man was at the pool of Bethesda, that is a dry season that affected the physical health of that man. He was at the pool of Bethesda, had been sick for 38 years. It was a dry season. But the one who changes times and season encountered that man who had been there for several years and his dry season ended. No matter how long you have been in your dry season, just as Israel was in dry season for three and a half years, that was abnormal. There was no single drop of rain. But within 24 hours, the dry season ended. I prophesy to somebody under the sound of my voice, within 24 hours from now, your dry season will turn around and it will end in the name of Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, Peter suffered from what I call career, business, or professional dry season. He toiled and worked all night, and the Bible says Peter caught nothing, but he encountered the Lord who changes times and seasons, and his dry season changed suddenly. It became fruitful season of bountiful harvest. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, may God launch you from now on to a new beginning of fruitful season of bountiful harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. And also we have another case of a marital dry season in 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1, the woman called Anna who had been married but barren with no child. However, she encountered the one who changes times and seasons and a season of fruitlessness, a season of barrenness change to fruitfulness. Ah, I pray for everyone believing God for the fruit of the womb, for everyone waiting and trusting on the Lord under the sound of my voice. The Lord who did it for my wife and I and turn our dry season of childlessness to a new season of fruitfulness. He will visit you and your family. This year, you shall be visited. About this time next year, according to the time of life, when you remember the pandemic season, when you remember the season of coronavirus, you will also remember that the Almighty God visited you in this same season and He turned your barren season unto fruitful harvest of joyful babies in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Your dry season is ending. Praise God. How do I see an end to my dry season? How to see an end or bring an end or allow God to bring an end to our dry season? Number one, 
Surrender your life to the changer of times and seasons. I know no other one who can change times and seasons other than the Lord Jesus Christ. As I've shared with you, he did it in Luke chapter 5. He has done it for me. He has done it for many that I know. And he's an unchanging changer. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he did it for others, he can also do it for you. What he requires of you is total surrender. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Make him your Lord and your Savior. And the one who turned around the dry season of Peter, get him into the boat of your destiny. He is going to bring an end to your dry season too in the name of Jesus Christ. A woman called Mary Magdalene experienced a dry season of mental affliction for many years. But she encountered Jesus and surrendered her life. The result was a complete and total turnaround for that woman. And from a mentally mad woman, she became a financially prosperous woman that God began to use as a kingdom treasurer. God can take you from zero to hero when he begins to change times and seasons concerning you. He has not finished with you yet. Rather, I dare say that the Lord is just beginning. Every situation and every circumstance that you may be going through right now can begin to work together for your good if only you will surrender to Jesus and love him and serve him as the Lord of your life. What must happen for the dry season to change? Number two, you must be faithful to God in spite of your adverse situation. Commit your ways into the hands of the Lord. Trust also in him. The Bible says he will bring it to pass. You must trust God. You must remain faithful irrespective of the storms that may be blowing around you. Remember Joseph. He refused to give up in spite of his adversities. He remained committed and faithful and loyal and obedient to God. He will not do wicked things and sin against God. Remember, before it rains, the cloud turns dark. Is your cloud dark now? Is it dark now? I prophesy to you. Get ready. The rain is about to fall. The rain is about to fall. When the night is darkest, it is also the time that a new day begins to announce itself. I prophesy to somebody under the sound of my voice, you are closer to your new day than ever before in the name of Jesus Christ. You may be driving through a very, very dark tunnel, but I also want you to understand that there is light after the tunnel. Whatever may be happening around the world right now, whatever may be confronting you right now, because your siege is over, your season is also changing, you are about to encounter the brightest of light even as you come out of the tunnel. In the name of Jesus Christ, he was told to arise and to shine. And God is saying that to you and he's saying that to me now. For our light has come, the glory of God has risen upon us. He said, though darkness, even thick, gross darkness may cover the whole world. He said, yet the light of God will shine upon you and it will cause you to arise. Yes, the cloud may look very, very dark now, but it is also announcing the imminence of your abundant rainfall. In 1 Kings 18, 45, 1 Kings 18, verse 45, the Bible says, it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and then what followed? A heavy rain began to fall. The darker your cloud may be, the darker your sky may be, no matter how black it may be, I like to announce to you, the darker the sky, the greater and the heavier the rain. The darker the sky, the heavier the rain. The darker the sky, the heavier the rain. In the name of Jesus Christ, your abundant rain is unstoppable. What must happen for dry season to change to fruitful season? Number three, you must be strong in faith. You must be strong in faith. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 3, a man had experienced dark season of life, dry season of life, for 40 years of his life. When he encountered those who carried the changer of times and seasons, Peter and John, and John they told the man, lifting up, holding his hand, they said to him, rise up and walk, rise up and walk. And the man, who had never walked, he took a leaping step. 
from walking. He took a leaping step from where he was crippled for 40 years. In the name of Jesus, you will not just walk tall. This year, you will begin to leave. You will begin to skip. In the mighty name of Jesus, what that means is restoration of lost years. He should have learned how to walk when he was a baby. He couldn't because he was crippled. But the first time he was going to go into, mo into motion, into movement, he did not just walk. He began to live. He began to skip. Mareke kotoli brada bazukoria makashanta. All your losses shall be restored back to you double in the name of Jesus Christ. That man had faith. He needed to exercise his faith. He needed to also rise up. And he did. In Micah 7, 8, Micah 7, 8, the Bible says, Rejoice not, O, o my enemies, for when I fall, I will rise again. I will rise again. In 1 Kings 18.41, 1 Kings 18.41, Elijah said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He was putting his faith to work. Having prayed, having fasted, you need to begin to put your faith to work. Your faith must be strong. Believing not only that the siege is over, but you must be expectant of a change of season. You must be expectant of a total and complete turn around. And you must be partaker of it. God needs you to play your part so that he too can play his own part. Peter was needed to cast his net into the deep just as he has also been fishing all night and he caught nothing. He still needed to use that same net why obeying the instructions of the changer of times and seasons? He did that, and what happened? A net breaking blessing. I pray for you that the next step of faith you are going to take in your home, in your career, in your finances, in your ministry, concerning your dream, concerning your goal, concerning your vision, concerning God's plan and purpose for you, the next step of faith that you are going to take will lead to net-breaking blessing. We lead to net breaking blessing. We lead to net breaking abundance. We lead to net breaking increase. We lead to net breaking enlargement for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What must I do to ensure that God, the changer of times and season, pays me a visit? Number four, you must sow in spite of your famine. It's part of your steps that you must be taking to enter into a new season. You must give sacrificially if you observe the season. You are never going to sow and that is dangerous because you sow nothing, you reap nothing. Whatsoever a man sow, that is what is going to reap. The Bible, the wise man tells us in Ecclesiastes 11.4, Ecclesiastes 11.4, he who observes the wind will not sow and he who regards the clouds we not reap. He who observes the wind will not sow. Are you observing the wind in the nations? Are you observing the storms that is going around, blowing at everyone and not just you alone? Are you all that you do is to observe the negativities and terrible stories around the pandemic and you have refused to sow? You have refused to do anything. You have refused to take steps. You have refused to use your gift and your talents. You have refused to contribute to community growth. You have refused to, to contribute to God's kingdom agenda in this end time. You have refused to sow. Ah, I am not very, very, you know, uh, comfortable with that attitude because it is like saying no to your own harvest. And may you say no, may you never say no to your harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you ever considered, my brothers, my sisters, how God causes rain to fall? Have you ever considered it? Even scientifically speaking, even, have you ever thought about it? What God does to allow, to bring rain to the earth is that God allows the earth to sow and the rain we get is the abyss. God allows the earth to sow into the heavens and the abyss that we get is the, is the rain that falls. What happens? How do we get rain formed? Clouds are formed when water vapor rises high up into the air. Clouds that you see up there are formed as water vapor from the earth, from the earth, rises up high into the heavens. And when clouds get so full of water, droplets that 
they can't hold anymore. The water falls back to the ground as rain. When the clouds get so full of water droplets, water droplets fills the heart as they arise from the heart and they go to the heavens, they fill the air and what happens? The cloud, the air, the heavens can no longer hold it anymore and then the water falls back to the ground as rain. That is the law of sowing and reaping as simple as it is. God, we need to provoke the earth to load the clouds for him to send down the rain. And before scientists ever discovered that, before geographers ever came to that understanding, before meteorological studies got them to that point, the Bible already stated it. That's why I love the Bible, the Word of God. The Word of God is ever settled in heaven. The Word of God is the truth of all times. The Word of God is the real foundation of every knowledge, every invention that man can claim to have, and that is the absolute reality of life, the Word of God. The Word of God is forever settled. Ecclesiastes 11.3, Ecclesiastes 11.3 says, If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Is that not the law of the rainfall as scientists have now come to understand? The clouds are full of rain. What forms the clouds is the vapor that rises from the heart. Ah, I pray, may God give you the grace to load your clouds, to load it to the point that the cloud, the heavens over there, can no longer continue to hold your harvest of rain. May your clouds become so heavily loaded that there will be no choice but to cause abundance of rain to fall. And to load your cloud, there must be seas. The seas that form the cloud were sown from the heart's water vapor. And there is no one on earth that God has not given seas to. So, so in Genesis 26 12, Genesis 26 12, Isaac sowed in that land. It was farming time, and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold and a lot of blessing. Others were watching him, others were looking at him, others called him crazy. Others felt that it was ridiculous for this man to be sowing in time of farming. But the man had divine wisdom. He had understanding that as long as he had remained, irrespective of the seasons of the earth, seed time and harvest time will never cease. Sacrifice still remains the key that opens your heavens and guarantees the release of abundant blessings. Praise the name of the Lord. Ask the widow in 1 Kings chapter 17. She will tell you that this is the absolute truth. And just like the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25, there is no one that God has not given seeds to, to sow. Whether he gave to you in five, in tens, or in one, God has given seeds to everyone according to their ability. Praise the name of the Lord. You want time and season to change? Be a sower of seeds, containing your time, in your talent, and in your treasure. Put this to work and season will change for you. Why is the government cl clamoring for a return to war? In spite of the fact that there are no vaccines for the virus yet, why does the government want to open up economy, the economy so that people can go back to war? The, sim the reason is simple. It is because there is no economy that can survive on doling out free money to people. No economy can survive by doling out free money onto people. Nothing is actually free in life. Somebody has paid for it. The one that paid for it has sown a seed towards it by paying. And that is why some people think it is free. And nothing can survive when it continues to be free. Some people will have to go back to work and begin to sow back into the economy so that the economy can, you know, can vomit harvest to the people again. What do I do to see a change in season? Number five, confess the promises of God always. Numbers 14, 28, confess his promises always. Hallelujah. Numbers 14, 28, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. What do I do to see a change in season? Number six, call unto God in prayers. Pray all manners of prayer. 
Jabez prayed in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 9 to 10. There was a change in times and season for Jabez. Daniel prayed in Daniel chapter 2 with his friends. And there was a change of times and seasons. In James chapter 5, verse 18. James chapter 5, verse 18. The Bible says Elijah prayed again. He prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth produced its fruits. You pray during PRC, the siege is over. You have to pray again. You have to keep praying. Men not always to pray and not to faint or give up or be discouraged. Pray without ceasing. Giving thanks always in everything and in every situation and circumstances. Rejoicing even in affliction. Oh, we have to pray, brethren, because prayer works. We have to pray, brethren, because Psalm 65, verse 2, our God hears prayers, and unto him will all flesh come. We have to pray, brethren, because God commands all men to pray and women. We have to pray, brethren, because we serve a God who commands and communicates with his people through prayer. We have to pray, brethren, because we live in perilous times and the days are full of evil. And only by divine intervention can our deliverance be guaranteed. We must pray. You must pray so that you will not become a prey. You must P-R-A-Y so that you will never become a P-R-E-Y in the name of Jesus. What do I do to secure a change of season? Number seven, realize that even in dry season, some crops do grow. Some crops do grow in dry season. God always makes a way. I'd like you to know that even in this pandemic, in this, in this world that we are today, that is threatened with global terrible recession, Please, brethren, you must understand that millionaires are still being made. In the dry season, some people still come out rejoicing because there are crops that do grow, even in the dry season. In this pandemic season, I tell you the truth and you can check it out. Many people are making money. There are jobs still being created. Businesses, opportunities are hidden in every problem in every problem and you must understand you must look for those opportunities discover the opportunities deploy your gift and talents towards the opportunities and then see enlargement take place in the name of jesus christ i pray that god will give you an eye the grace to discover the advantage in our adversities for every adversity you see in life, there is an advantage. There is an advantage. Goliath was an adversity. But yet, that was David's advantage to get into the palace. Glory be to God. Haman the Agagai was a great adversity to the Jews. Yet, that was an advantage for Mordecai to take his position and become number two in the land. There is always an advantage in every adversity that you go through in life. It was a terrible affliction and adversity for the Hebrew boys to go into the fiery furnace, but yeah, there was an advantage there because their adversity turned to their promotion. It was adversity for Peter to toil all night and cut nothing. But yeah, there was an advantage there. It was Jesus' opportunity to enter into his destiny, not only to give him a turnaround and a new season, but to settle his destiny permanently. There is an advantage in your adversity and you must be ready and willing to embrace the God who changes times and seasons. Even in Egypt, under Joseph, remember Joseph came out with a strategy that ensured that there was still food even in dry season. I pray for you that in every dry season of life, ah, food will not be lacking on your table, provisions will not be lacking in your table in the name your home, in the name of Jesus Christ. Joseph had a divine wisdom that even in time of season, in time of famine, in time of dry season, it was still possible to survive and to succeed. In Genesis 47, 23 to 24, Genesis 47, 23 to 24, we learn some secret and powerful, you know, uh, uh, wisdom from what Joseph did and in the land of Egypt where there had been terrible famine we saw that the first year people were coming and Joseph was giving them bread he was giving them bread for their livestock that he took over from them and then after one year 
They came back again. They said, oh, our bread is finished. We don't have bread anymore. And we have given you our livestock. We have given you our cattle. We don't have bread anymore. We don't, all we have now is our land. And they said to Joseph, they said, we give you our land. You give us seed. They suddenly realized that people can be giving you bread. And bread will be finished one day. But if only you can get, get access to seeds. And you begin to put the seed to work. And to sow the seeds. Then you can be expectant of harvest. And you know what happened? Joseph gave them seeds. And when he gave them seeds, he, pleased, he had a bargain with them. That when harvest time came, they will give one fifth of their harvest to the king. And then they will retain the rest. These people, instead of taking bread and eating bread and coming back to lament that there was no more bread, the moment they began to receive seeds and they started putting their seeds into use and sowing their seeds, their season began to change. Their season began to change. They did not need to come back to Joseph again to beg for either bread or for seed because the one that gave them seed in the time of sowing to sow seeds and give them harvest, in harvest time, they also had seeds to keep, to take back to the land so that they can sow. Ah, glory be to God. There is always power in the seed. Wherever there is a seed, there is a guarantee that times and seasons will change. And God that never left anyone so forsaking that they will not have a seed to sow. A seed is in your time. A seed is in your talent. A seed is in the gift that God has given you. A seed is in the treasure that God has given you. You always have seed to sow. You and I are products of the seed sown by our parents for God to cause conception to take place. The Bible says, Boaz went on to root and the Lord granted them conception. Boaz took a seed unto Ruth. Ruth also delivered her own seed. And the result was conception. The result was fruitfulness. You are a bundle of seed walking. Go out there, brother. Go out there, sister. Begin to put your seed, the seed of your destiny, into the fertile ground that God has given you. And harvest is guaranteed. Don't fold your hands in dry season. Please do something. Even the poor widow with her two sons, the poor widow still had a little jar of oil. That was a seed that could still do great things. During lockdown, many people still got jobs and they work even extra job, extra job. I heard the story of, of, some, of, of, of some young people who had jobs, they had regular jobs, before the pandemic, their regular jobs continue as their employers ask them to work from home. You know what they did? At 5 a.m., they will wake up very early in the morning. They will go to Sainsbury, do shelving, do some work there for two hours. They come back, shower, take their shower. By 9 a.m., they sat on their desk at home and they began to do their office job. They have suddenly, you know, moved up from just having one job to two jobs, even in the time of pandemic. The result is increased income for them. You may sit down there, brother and sister, and be lamenting, and be mourning, and be mourning that there is a lion on the street. I cannot go out to the market. But beloved, before you know what is happening, people are breaking through. People are succeeding. I want to encourage you today that I believe with the whole of my heart that no condition is permanent. This dry season of your life is ending and you are about to enter into abundance. Today, I'd like you to pray again like Elijah, who prayed again and the heavens give rain. May your heaven give rain and may your heart produce its fruit for your harvest to come in the name of Jesus Christ. The one that invented the Zoom does not have two heads. It's just one, like yours and like mine. In four months during this season of pandemic, that company called Zoom, I am told and I read, made about $4 billion. That is not only incredible, it is also a possibility. Because even in time of famine, even in dry season, some crops do grow. I pray for you. May your own crop, may your own seed be the seed that will grow even in time of this famine and produce abundant harvest in the name 
of Jesus Christ. Are you there, brothers and sisters? You have not given your life to Jesus? Do not wait until tomorrow. This is the day of salvation. He is the one that can change times and seasons and give you fruitful, genuine harvest again. I'd like you to join me to say a prayer of salvation if you want to give your life to Jesus. And I encourage you to do so because there is no other way by which men can be saved other than through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And one day we will appear before our Maker. The first question he will ask us is, what did you do about my son, Jesus? And what he expects you to do is to embrace him as your Lord and your Savior. He is the Savior of sinners and is alive to save you and to save me. Let us pray. Pray this prayer with me if you want to give yourself, surrender your life to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I come to you this day. I confess all my sins. I repent and renounce them all. I ask for mercy and for forgiveness. Let your precious blood wash me clean. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Take over completely. Begin to rule and reign over my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. And use me mightily for your glory. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I'd like you to test the word saved. Test saved to the number that appears on the screen. And may God bless you. Shall we pray now? There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. You want to pray and say, Father, I thank you for the rainy season that I've enjoyed in time past. I thank you for fruitfulness that I've enjoyed. I thank you for abundance that I've enjoyed. I thank you for greatness that I've enjoyed. I thank you for your love that I've enjoyed. I thank you for your provision that I've enjoyed. I thank you for your grace that I've enjoyed. I give you praise. I bless your name. I honor you. I adore you. I magnify you. Lord, I'm so grateful to you. Lord, I'm so thankful to you. Lord, I bless you. Blessed, blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say, Father, forgive me today for all that I have done or refuse to do that has resulted in my dry season. My Father and my God, forgive me today for all that I have done. Forgive me today for all that I have refused to do that has resulted in my dry season. Have mercy on me, Lord. Forgive me, King of Glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say, every cloud of darkness preventing my rainfall be rolled away now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every cloud of darkness preventing my rainfall be rolled away. Be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Every cloud of darkness preventing my rainfall, I command you to be rolled away. Be rolled away right now in Jesus' name, we pray. Say, every satanic umbrella collecting my rain of blessing Catch fire now. Catch fire. Pray that prayer. Every satanic umbrella collecting my rain of blessing. Catch fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Catch fire. Catch fire. Every satanic umbrella collecting my rain of blessing. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Father, command my new season of divine rainfall to appear. O oh Lord, that changes times and seasons. Command my new season. My new season of divine rainfall. Command it to appear. Command it to appear. Command it to appear. Command it to appear. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say, any invisible role, time my destiny, time my war to dry season. 
be born to ashes now. Any invisible role that is tying my work, tying my career, tying my profession, tying my marriage, tying my destiny to dry season. Let that role be born to ashes. Let it be born to ashes in the name of Jesus. Let it be born to ashes. Invisible rope of limitation. Invisible rope of witchcraft practices. Invisible rope of causes. Invisible rope of ancestral generational personal sins. Every invisible rope that may be tying my destiny. That may be tying my life, my wife, my children. That may be tying my career, my ministry, my business, my project. Oh, unto the dry season. Let that rope Bomb. Let it burn to ashes now. Let it burn to ashes now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say every embargo of darkness assigned against my rising and shining. Be lifted now. Be lifted now. Every embargo of darkness assigned against my rising and shining. I command you. Be lifted. Be lifted. Be lifted. Be lifted. Be lifted. Be lifted. In Jesus' name, we pray. Begin to give thanks to God. Say, my father, my father. In my life, in my family, in my nation, in my church, I thank you. I thank you because there is an end to dry season. Thank you, my father, that in my life, in my family, in my nation, in my business, in my career, in my marriage, in my finances. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. There is an end to dry season. For surely there is an end. My expectation will not be cut short. Be korima ka santaya. Ne kuta libra ne ke remo ko shanta. Libre ne ke sente yanda. To God alone be that glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Your dry season is ending. Your dry season is ending. Your dry season has ended. In the name of God the Father, the name of God the Son, the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Congratulations. Hallelujah. I believe you have been blessed and I can't wait to hear your testimony. Please do not go. The service will soon be over. I will be back to conclude the service with a special prayer for you. Thank you. I celebrate you. Your dry season is over. Amen. Message of life, message of deliverance to his children. We pray that your anointing will forever remain fresh. We pray that God will envelope you with his glory. We soak you and your loved one in the, in the blood of Jesus. There shall be no counter attack against you from the pit of hell. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment is condemned. And no weapon formed against you will stand. Ministry, your ministry will not be able spoken of. There shall be testimony following your ministration all over the world. It is well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, it is time to sow our seed. It is time to give our offerings. It is time to bring our tithes and redeem our pledges. The Bible says to us in the book of Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis 8, 22, it says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest time will never cease. Seed time and harvest time will never cease. It shows that harvest always follows sowing. The seed of yesterday has given rise to the harvest you are enjoying today. For some people, it is their sowing time. Don't worry, your harvest time will come. For some people, they are already in their harvest time. That was as a result of your seed of yesterday. And if you continue to sow, you will never run out of harvest time in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, package your offerings. The various ways of giving are displayed on the screen as we speak right now. You can give by bank transfer, you can give by PayPal, whichever one is convenient for you. Just follow the instruction as displayed on the screen. And I pray that it is well with you as you do so in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father God, we just want to thank you for the privilege you have given unto your people. The privilege you have given unto us to sow and give back unto you that out of which you are giving unto us. We pray that harvest will locate these seeds in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those who are giving their tithes today, life will never be tight with you. Heaven upon you shall be open. God will rebuild the virus for your sake. In times of trouble, God will remember your offerings. As many as are not able to give right now, God will surely visit you with abundance. About this time tomorrow, you will encounter testimony and miracle that will make you to be among the sower. So shall it be. 
and so it is. For in Jesus' mighty precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Wow, a word for the season. I trust that you've been ministered to. My name is Bumi Fagwenro Byron, and I'm here with the announcements for this week. Prayer quick sessions continue on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings from 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. And Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12 midnight to 1 a.m. Please invite all your loved ones to join in. Details of how to join in are displayed on the screen. If today is your first time of watching us online, we would like to thank you for joining us. Please give us a wave emoji in the comment section so we can identify you. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., our midweek Bible study is on. It's a time to dig deep into the scriptures to get great insight into God's word. So please join in. On Friday at 7 p.m., we would have our prayer meeting with Holy Communion themed, My Help Cometh. You will surely find help that you seek in Jesus' name. Both Wednesday and Friday meetings will be live on our website, www.rccgvictoryhouse.com. If you have given your life to Christ, but yet to be water baptized by immersion, you can join the New Believers and Baptismal classes. Classes hold virtually every Saturday on Zoom. The slots are 11 a.m. to 12 noon for the junior class, 12.15 to 1.15 p.m. intermediate class, 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. for the adult class. Please call 07984 for more information and to register. And lastly, our Sunday School Bible Study takes place on Sunday evenings, 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Don't forget to bring your Sunday School Manual. If you have any questions, please send them to Sunday School at rccgvictoryhouse.com. That's it from us here at BBN News. Thanks once again for joining the service today. If you're not yet following us on our social media, please do so to ensure you are kept up to date with all of our events. Our social media handle is at RCCG Victory House. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and share this service with your loved ones. I will now hand you over to Pastor Leke. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am confident that the Almighty God has visited us, blessed us at this Sunday morning service, and without any doubt, the dry season has ended for you and for me. A new season of great joy, great fruitfulness is being given back to. Hallelujah. As we bring the service to a close, I want to pray uh, a prayer of blessing for you, for your family members, and indeed for our nation. Amen. And before I pray, I just want to encourage you uh, continue to join us for our online services. By the special grace of God, we are reviewing situation of things. Thank God for the gradual lifting of lockdown by the government of our country, including uh, 
the lifting of total lockdown on church premises for church services and worship. I know that churches are now allowed to resume uh, in compliance with uh, guidelines and, uh, and worship in church building. As I've informed us and announced to us, uh, we are carefully reviewing things. We are fully ready to resume all facilities, all uh, equipments are installed in church, ready to, to go. However, as I've always maintained, the health, the safety, and the care of the sheep is my primary responsibility. And of course, I know God is our carer, and I'm to work with God to ensure that the sheep of God remain safe and secure. So by the special grace of God, we continue our online services till the end of July. And by the grace of God, in early August, we will be announcing and uh, looking into resuming worship at our church buildings. And I know that by the special grace of God, the keeper of Israel will keep us. The shepherd of Israel will look after us. No evil will come near us and our family members. And indeed, all will be well with our nation. From this Wednesday and every Wednesday, I'd like you to please join us for a special series that we will be teaching at our success school, Wednesday success school at 7 p.m. Uh, London time. I'm encouraging you not to miss the services at all. We will be starting a series and the series will be titled The God of Miracles. The God of Miracles. We serve the God of Miracles. We'll be studying our God and how he performs miracles and we will be praying for miracles for our lives too because we live in a season we live at a time when we need god more than ever before and when we have god with us we know we have the miracle worker with us he's the miracle working god come and learn at his feet and your life will be miracle filled life in the name of jesus christ let us pray i pray for you on this altar today that henceforth, God will make you and your family members and the places round about you, your home, your career, your work, your nation, and all that pertains to you, God will make you a blessing in the name of Jesus. The Lord will cause the shower to come down in the right season for you. There shall be showers of blessings. The Almighty God will open rivers in your high places and fountains in the midst of your valleys. The Almighty God will make your wilderness a pool of water and your dry land springs of water. The Lord will terminate every dry season in your life. The Lord will be gracious towards you. There shall be for you, your family members, your loved ones, your nation, there shall be showers of blessings in the name of god the father the name of god the son the name of god the holy spirit in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen god bless you i celebrate you have a wonderful week and the god of miracles will manifest his miracles in every department of our lives in jesus name praise the lord hallelujah Amen and amen. I love you. I celebrate you. God bless. Here we are Giving you thanks For all you do As we pray And worship your holy You are here Dwelling within our praise Here we are, somebody say Here we are, somebody say